today, the 22nd of April, is Earth Day. And the theme for this year is our planet versus plastic. Over the last 60 years, around 7 billion tonnes of plastic have been produced. This is according to the United Nations. And only around 10% of that has been recycled. Now, though, there are initiatives flourishing around the world to try and tackle the crisis. And one of them is based here in France. Our environment editor, Valerie Decamp, has been looking into all of that. She's with me now. Valerie, Hi, hello. Well, that company called Carbios, as you were saying, is based in France, in central France, in Clermont-Ferrand. And traditionally, Nadia, when you recycle plastic, you melt it down and then reshape it into a new product. Mm -hmm. That is called mechanical recycling. Well, Carbios, the company that I went and meet, has developed an alternative method using enzymes, a protein that is capable of breaking down polyethylene. Take a look. A plastic bottle turned into fabric, recycled into another piece of clothing, and transformed again into a new container. French biotechnology startup Carbios says it can do what nobody else can – several rounds of recycling in a closed loop. This is our raw material. As you can see, there's colored plastic that comes in different shapes. We also have textiles. And all of that can be transformed into a single end product, a clear bottle. We can do that without adding virgin plastic made from fossil fuels. No chemicals nor high heat are needed here, but an enzyme, a protein capable of breaking down polyethylene, also called PET, one of the most common single-use plastics. Donc là, je verse les pelettes dans l'eau. Maintenant, je vais mettre l'enzyme dans le réacteur. Et la réaction va commencer. The company claims that the enzyme can successfully degrade polyethylene in just 24 hours. The enzyme's job is to decompose polyethylene chains, which are made of two separate molecules. The enzyme will break them apart, and we can reassemble them to make plastic. The process has also been tested in this demonstrator, but a full-scale factory will be operational by 2025 with an annual capacity of 50,000 tons of plastic. But Carbio says its real potential lies elsewhere. Carbios can recycle materials nobody else can, like multi-layer food packaging, small items used in the cosmetics industry, or polyester fiber, which are all poorly recycled or not recycled at all. The technology has drawn the interest of major plastic polluters, including Nestle Waters, Pepsi and L'Oreal, one of the startup's main shareholders. But for NGOs, the promise of endless recycling is a distraction from the real issue, the world's addiction to plastics. Why do we need to invent new industrial processes instead of questioning our model? And that means investing massively in reuse solutions, in zero-waste grocery shopping, and building a model where we don't create waste. According to OECD estimates, the world already churns out 450 million tons of plastic per year, a figure set to triple to 1.2 billion by 2060. And Valerie DeCamp, who produced that report, is still with me here in the studio. Look, Valerie, we saw at the end of that report that the organisation Zero Waste has some concerns about these emerging recycling technologies. I guess that's not a great starting point, given the scale of the problem we face. I mean, certainly recycling rates are really low. You mentioned mm. less than 10% uh, of waste is being recycled. When it comes to textiles that contain uh, plastic, that's less than 1%. So there's no question that uh, recycling rates need to go up if we really need to tackle uh, the plastic uh, pollution crisis. But there are several things to keep in mind. Uh, first of all, there's no such thing as infinite recycling. Uh, I mean, traditionally, you are able to recycle plastic twice. Uh, this startup car 
Arbios, they say that they can recycle uh, up to 10 times. But at the end of the day, a, a given product will still reach the end of its life and will have to be disposed of. Uh, there's also, we don't really know if there's a market for recycled uh, polyethylene. Uh, it can be twice as uh, costly as virgin plastic. Mm. And there's also the fact that plastic is derived from oil. And so the plastics industry um, is responsible for 5% of global carbon emissions. And so even though you have this argument that as long as we keep recycling, that means less oil being extracted. Mm. That reasoning, um, you know, has its own limits, considering that plastic production will triple by 2060. So no amount of recycling will ever compensate for, uh, you know, the emissions uh, being emitted in the atmosphere from all this production. And finally, Valerie, leaders are going to meet in Canada this week to negotiate a global plastics treaty. What can you tell us about that pertaining to this story? Well, uh, the most recent draft of that uh, potential treaty does obviously mention recycling um, in, you know, trying to promote better product design um, and improve recycling. But the real question um, that will uh, be on everyone's minds in, in Canada is, will production be mentioned? Um, and that is a real question here. Uh, countries are at odds when it comes to production. Some of them want production caps, but you also have oil producing countries countries, they are in favor of recycling instead of production caps, arguably because uh, more recycling doesn't necessarily threaten their their, their business line. Mm. Um, and also bearing in mind, Nadia, that these negotiations are really key for oil producing countries because they see plastic as a plan B when and if we begin phasing down oil for transport needs, for energy needs, uh, as we begin to electrify our economies, mm -hmm. they see as um, if we cannot burn more oil, then turn it into plastic. And that is something campaigners are really worried about. Valerie DeCamp, our environment editor. Thank you very much indeed.